Hey there, CPO here, and this is going to be the first video in a series that I'm going to do going over the Real Flight 7 flight simulator. This is from Great Plains. I figured I would uh, take you through not only the unboxing, but also the installation, setup, and just go over some of the key features. So this is it, uh, the un unboxing. You know, comes with a DVD and a installation guide, and there's actually a little cheat sheet on the back of that installation guide that's got some helpful tips. This is the Interlink Elite Edition, which comes with the transmitter that is made by Futaba, uh, and it's a fairly good quality transmitter. Now, it's a simulator transmitter, so it doesn't have any radio modules in it or anything like that. It can't actually control... Uh, aircraft in real life but it feels pretty solid and feels like any other you know decent transmitter I've uh, had the opportunity to hold the sticks feel really nice uh, all the switches feel really solid uh, it does have a, uh, a little knob on here another cool thing is you can connect a live transmitter to the back of this uh, using one of these two uh, cables and uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to use uh, this one cable to connect just a standard JR style radio to the back of this uh, FM uh, PPM input. And it allows me to, for example, uh, connect my Tyrannus to this and use my Tyrannus for flight sim. So what that means is I have the best of both worlds. I have the real flight uh, simulator transmitter, but I also have the ability to use any other live transmitter. So say I wanted to, to test out uh, some custom mixes or some custom functions that I'm working on in the Tyrannus. I can run that into the simulator, test it out on a simulated model. Comes with a nice long USB cable. I think it's like about seven feet long. But uh, like I said, the quality of this thing uh, is really quite impressive. It doesn't feel like a, a toy or just a placeholder simulator. Uh, if you would, it, it actually feels like a legit uh, radio. So you can see it's got eight channels, and they're very well defined uh, by labels uh, on the uh, on the front of the transmitter. Uh, throttle hold is on the right side, which kind of threw me off a little bit because I expected a Futaba style radio, which this is you know made by Futaba. I kind of figured it would automatically be on the left hand side, but it's on the right hand side. You've got your reset menu, selection buttons. Uh, navigation controls uh, here on the Interlink Elite. So now that we've looked at it, let's uh, let's get the software installed. All right, so I'm installing this in Windows 7, and when I put the DVD in, it automatically uh, runs this pop-up, and I just want to select run setup.exe, and that's going to allow me to start the installation. Now, I'm always one to check on the advanced tab to see what options are available. And in this case, only installation directory and the name in the start menu. So you can safely uh, see everything, all the advanced options. So I'm just going to hit uh, to begin the installation here. And I'm speeding up time dramatically here. So uh, once you kick this off, it's got to copy a lot of data from that DVD onto your computer. Go have a cup of coffee, maybe have a sandwich. Uh, it's going to take a little while. As a matter of fact, I've sped up time on this to be approximately one minute per second that you're viewing this video. So there's quite a lot to, uh, to do. It will also install Visual C++, and that just automatically happens for you. Um, you don't have to do anything. Eventually, you'll get to the point where it says the installation has completed successfully. It will then tell you that you need to install DirectX, and will actually open up the installation for that as well. If you already have DirectX, nine on your system, this won't be needed. Once that installation completes, go ahead and plug in the dongle from the transmitter controller and get those drivers loaded up. That'll just take a second, but it should automatically install the drivers required for your interlink transmitter. Now, if you're like me, you might be inclined to click on the Start menu, and then you'll see that Real Flight 7 link in the Start menu. If you click on that, it's not actually going to load Real Flight 7 yet. It's just going to yell at you and tell you that you haven't entered in your serial numbers for the software and the interlink. So we've got to do that first, and it tells you you need to open up the Real Flight 7 launcher. So go to the Start menu, All Programs, 
go down to Real Flight 7, and then in there is the Real Flight 7 launcher. All right, so in the Real Flight 7 launcher, you have the opportunity to enter your serial numbers. Uh, that's going to be the first thing that you can do. The serial number for the software is on the back of the DVD case. And then, of course, the serial number for the controller is on the back of the controller itself. Once you've done that, it's going to check for updates and uh, ask you if you want to download the updates. However, <laughs> we're not quite done yet. You can't download updates until you register with RealFlight. So you got to go back in, open up RealFlight 7 Launcher, and then under the advanced options now, you need to click on registration updates. And then from there, you're going to enter in your registration. So click there, device registration, fill out all the required fields, and then send that information. Once you have that done, you're now eligible for online updates. So now you can click update to latest version and it will download all of the latest updates for your software. In this case, I'm also getting a new launcher installed, which requires me to close out the original launcher and then reopen a new one, and then actually download the Real Flight 7 updates. Now, this could take a little bit of time as well, not nearly as long as it took for the original installation, and of course it all depends on your internet connection as well. By the way, if you're not connected to the internet and you need to register, there is an opportunity to do a registration by phone of your software if you're trying to install this offline. Of course, you'll need to go online to get updates or download them and then apply them later on. Anyway, the update is successful. You can see the release notes for this version as well as previous versions. And if you can believe it, we're just about ready to actually launch Real Flight 7 for the first time. You can now safely close out of this and close out of the online updating screen. Now the installation took approximately 36 minutes from start to finish. That's from the time I put in the, the DVD and started the install till the time I finished the last update. Okay, so now let's go open the Real Flight 7 link in the start menu. So you'll be presented with this Welcome to Real Flight screen, which you can disable on startup in the future if you like. If you click the fly button, you'll actually be set up with a gasser airplane right off the get-go. And clearly my stick is not in the uh, low throttle position. But before we can start flying, we need to calibrate our controller. This is the Interlink Elite, so we still need to calibrate it. So click the calibrate button, follow the instructions, center all of the sticks, and then uh, proceed to the next screen. At this point, you can move all of your sticks to all uh, endpoints, both low and high endpoints, as well as flip all the switches and turn the knob uh, all the way to both the directions. Once you have that, you can click Finish, and your controller is now properly calibrated. And we're back to our gasser. This is my first time seeing this, so I'm kind of playing around a little bit. Turns out I can even open up the canopy. It's pretty cool. Hmm, should we go for a quick flight? <laughs> nah, not yet. Sorry. It's not time yet. But the first thing I want to do show you is how to get to the manual. So if you click Real Flight Help under the Help menu bar, you can open up the Real Flight 7 manual. And there's a very comprehensive PDF manual. Uh, it's very involved, and I highly recommend you check it out because it really is the way to learn everything you need to know about Real Flight 7. All right, so that's what's in the box. Uh, that's a quick look at the Interlink controller. And in future videos, I will go through the features of Real Flight 7 uh, and including uh, all the cool stuff to know. But in the meantime, I think that that's about it for this video. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, and I almost forgot. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, you can always find me on 
everythingcpo.com or keep up with me on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. <laughs>